On Taser International's website, Dr. Ho's studies are clearly displayed, along with a long list of studies showing tasers are safe, some of them independent, but a majority of them paid for by Taser. But you won't find any mention of the several negative studies that have been published in peer-reviewed medical journals. Uh, we have a lot of studies on our website, but and frankly, we, we only have selected studies that are on the website. We do provide a full med medical compendium that do have all of the studies that are out there. Uh, frankly, some of those studies can lead to misleading conclusions. Most police officers are unaware of the debate in the scientific community. They are convinced that tasers are safer than Tylenol. Do you believe the manufacturer? Yes, I do. At this point in time, I do. I haven't seen anything that would uh, change my opinion at this point. When we come back, Taser tries hard to silence its critics. She must be um, disciplined in some way. No reporter knows the ins and outs of Taser International better than Robert Anglin of the Arizona Republic. In 2004, he began digging into the stun gun manufacturer's claims. The message that they were delivering loud and clear was, Taser has never hurt anyone. Now, I would spent a career investigating police departments, looking into different situations involving guns and use of force, and I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. Anglin made the startling discovery when reviewing over 150 cases where people had died after the use of a taser. In 20 of them, the autopsies would not rule out tasers as a cause of death. Taser International disputed those findings. They would say that the coroners were novices in the area of electrical engineering, that they didn't have the expertise or the knowledge to be able to rule that. And so the coroners became the ones who were wrong. And of course, later we found out that Taser was actually challenging coroners. Um, and at least in one case, we had a coroner tell us that Taser was telling him to revise the ruling. Randy Hanslick is a coroner the chief medical examiner of Atlanta, Georgia. He says many medical examiners received a booklet from Taser International explaining how to detect excited delirium in in-custody death cases. I think that was part of their educational effort, but it also seemed kind of apparent that they were trying to divert your interest toward the excited delirium as opposed to the, the Taser playing a role, which I think everybody realized and kind of took with a grain of salt. Representatives from Taser International have also been showing up at several medical examiner conferences and pulling no punches. The Taser group gave a presentation and um, names of specific physicians were mentioned in what you might say a not totally desirable light. And uh, it kind of put some people aback at that time that, uh, you know, we're going beyond the scientific issues and it's kind of getting into the range of personal attacks or attacking someone's credentials or their abilities. In fact, Taser International is not only attacking their credibility, they are taking some of them to court, suing an Ohio medical examiner, Lisa Kohler, who ruled in two deaths that the stun gun was a contributing factor. Mark Kroll accuses her of acting irresponsibly. She is on a crusade now to blame a Taser device for a death in every case where it was used in an arrest, and that is now resulting in the prosecution of police officers for murder. So she must be um, disciplined in some way. I think if we get put in a position where, out of fear of litigation or some other factor, we don't acknowledge what we think to be the truth, that kind of eliminates a check and balance on the system. If everybody just was intimidated into never mentioning this, people might not recognize a problem that really exists. Okay. Scientists aren't immune either. Taser International sued forensic engineer Jim Ruggieri after he published a study critical of tasers in a scientific journal. At Taser International's headquarters, lawyers are very important. Identification is completed. Vice President of Communications, Steve Tuttle. This is our legal department up here. That's just a part of doing business. If you're in law enforcement selling products, you're gonna get sued. What a lot of people don't know is that we've not lost a case yet. 
you can't be in a business like this without being assertive and without you know, putting a lot of effort to it. And, and we stand tall. Relentless reporters have also been a problem. So Taser even launched a lawsuit against the Arizona Republic and its owners. They did sue the newspaper. The case never made it to trial. Legal threats or not, Anglin kept digging and discovered other risks that the company had failed to disclose. In the beginning, Taser would in their literature and in their, in their comments would say 100,000 police officers have been shocked without incident. It's proof of the safety of the stun gun. And what we were finding was that police officers across the country were reporting injuries that they blamed on, on, on being sustained by taking a taser shock and training exercises. CBC News has obtained internal Phoenix police emails showing that officers were being injured by tasers during training, in some cases very seriously. After reviewing the list of injuries, including a spinal one, the Phoenix police chief decreed that under no circumstances will anyone be tased during future training. That raised the question in the mind of some that if tasers were too dangerous for officers, were they safe to use routinely on suspects? In other parts of the U.S. and Canada, Taser has faced lawsuits from injured police officers. They've settled most of them. In those cases, if we can avoid being across uh, the courtroom from a customer, from a law enforcement officer, uh, and it makes sense that in the cases where we have settled, the economics have been just, it would have cost us far more to litigate than to have made a minor settlement with a customer. One settlement that wasn't minor involved Taser International's own shareholders. They launched a class action suit against the company, claiming executives had hidden problems with the safety of its weapons to boost the share price. Taser settled that one last March for a whopping $20 million rather than facing an open trial. The claims that were made in there were outrageous, we could prove them absolutely wrong. Uh, but the nature of that type of litigation was such that it would have cost us far more to litigate the case. And at the end of the day, our lawyers described it to us as basically nuclear war. And a $20 million settlement was a drop in the bucket compared to the profits to be made now by branching out into the consumer market, which has always been the company's dream. Meet Eric Swiger, an ultimate cage fighter. His opponent, 95-pound Jane Doe, armed with only seven ounces of Taser C2. Taser International's infomercial presents its new Taser C2 as the ultimate self-defense for women, available in soft colors and much less intimidating than its alternatives. He lunges. She doesn't hesitate to hit him with the C2, and he goes down, totally incapacitated. I had a barbecue knife under my bed, correct. Dana Schaffman used to live in fear of being attacked. So you had that knife under your bed? Correct. And under my pillow. She became an independent distributor of the Taser C2, and she says the device is a success. I have had a wonderful reception, and I think overall I've increased the awareness of the product so that women like myself can live day to day with a heightened quality of life and less fear. I personally uh, asked to, to be hit by a taser because I didn't feel that I could sell something and tell people it wasn't lethal until I experienced its non-lethalness. Ah, ah. You know, I'm here to tell the tale. Look, I've been hit with this thing seven times. Every senior employee at this company has been hit with a taser. Many of our wives, many of our children have been hit with tasers. So we believe this is the safest way to get a violent person under control. That's huge. We're very proud of what we do. And it's, it is like a religion to us. The devil, is, of course, is in the details. I think it's a publicly traded company that, that needs profits and, and embraces profits. And I can't get in the way of a, that, that kind of biblical message. For those who aren't converts, this is a practical dilemma. As a researcher on one hand and a police officer on the other, Dr. Andrew Dennis is torn about tasers. I think there is an absolute use for it, and I think there is, I think there is a role for this device. Um, and I think there is a very 
a fair amount of benefit for this device. However, for it to be, t for it to be labeled as completely consequence-free and risk-free, that I don't think is appropriate. In the end, one of the key questions is how much information are police officers really getting about this weapon? We might never find out exactly why Robert Jakansky died, but if RCMP officers had been better informed of the potential risk of serious injury or death from a taser gun, would they have used it so quickly? Frédéric Zalak, CBC News, Vancouver.